Hi everyone, this is Linda, and we're going to create this little um, applique using a couple of different things. We're going to use a thread cache, and we're going to create a database that's just for the threads that are going to be used on the scissors. And then we're going to use the quilt block, or the, I'm sorry, the quick design wizard, and create the little sewing machine. And it's all pretty much can be done with either extra or ultra. And so we're, well, let's get started. The first thing we want to do is I want to create a database of threads that are patriotic kind of in colors. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick on the thread cache. And oops, hit the wrong button, thread cache. And the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to go to the My Thread database and we're going to create a new one. So to create a new thread database, we're going to come over here and over on the right hand side, we pick on add new thread, new database. And I'm going to call this patriotic too, just because I've already created it once. And so for our thread colors, we need to have a couple of different things. So I'm going to change where it says my threads, and I'm going to pick on the Robus and Anton Rayon 40. And I'm, I want a red and I maybe want a yellow or a gold somewhere in there. And I need, so let's start with our red. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to start with a little goldie and I'm going to do a blue and I'm going to move it over and I want, probably want a black and a, it's actually a navy blue or real dark blue and I'm going to put in a couple of different grays just because I know I want that for the scissors themselves and if I can think of anything else maybe if I want just to put a regular old white in there we can put a white in there it's probably a little bit too light and you may not like it. You could also change that. Let's say we don't want that one and I'm going to remove that one off the database and all I have to do is I can hit um, come down here and hit delete thread and so you can take that white out of there and maybe I pick on the white but I really want this other gray that's here and I can move that over there. So there's three different shades of gray. There's kind of a bluish black. There's a blue and there's a gold yellow and there's a red. So we've got those all set. And I called it patriotic too only because I already have patriotic already created. So we're going to close that. Then the first thing we want to do is we can actually create our uh, set our hoop up. So I'm going to start a brand new one. So we have I'm going to go to file and I'm going to do a new window. And it takes it a second, sorry. And the hoop size we're going to use is the 200 by 200. Now you could do this any plate, any size you, you really want it to do, but that's what we're going to use for this. And I happen to have these listed in my hoops. If you don't have your my hoop set up, you can actually come in here and pick on the particular machine you have and use that. Once you, let's say if I'm at the designer Epic and I wanted to change and add my 200 by 200 hoop to it, I'd come here and then I'd say include in my hoops. And because I already have it there, I'm going back to my hoops. My hoops, and I'm going to pick on the 200 by 200. And so I need to put the my little steps together. So I'm going to go first to my letter tab, and I'm going to pick on the applique fonts that are up near the top. Now I kind of wanted it kind of rounded, and so depending on which version of the software you have, if you have extra, you might not have all of these options. So you want to pick on one, and the one I picked on it was the Rion Patch 35 to 70, and I'm going to pick on that. And the, I'm just going to type in an L, capital L, and hit apply. And it's not really the size I want. So because it has the green bars on here, I can actually hold my control key and drag one of the corners and it will resize it appropriately. And I can keep going. By doing the control key, it grabs both sides. Now I want it to kind of be a little bit longer this way. So I let go of the control key and just drag. Now I don't like this fabric and I actually want to put in a different fabric here. And I'm going to show you real quick how to do that. Um, we won't do that for all of these, but I just wanted to show you how to do that. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to pick on applique fabric. And I want to change that applique fabric to one that I personally have in my data in that I personally have and that isn't included. Now, normally I would just say, just pick on one of the ones that is closest to it. So I'm going to choose fabric here and I'm going to come down here where it says add a new background fabric. And so what I'm going to do is because I don't have a picture of it, I'm going to scan it for my scanner and I have to choose the appropriate scanner. 
I'm going to hit select. And what I like to do is I hit preview first. And you always want a color picture. So we're going to hit preview. And it's going to take it a second. And once you have it here, and then you want to kind of find your repeat. Um, it's not really important, but it is to a point. I kind of, whoops, fairly close to what it's going to be. And you want to repeat so it makes it easier so that when the repeats happen on your um, applique itself, it'll be good. So we're just going to hit scan. And again, it's going to take it a second. Hang on. And once the data is transferred, it's going to look like this. So now we're going to hit next. And allowing this to just be this area here, which is perfectly fine, you can move it around so you think you might want something just a little bit different. It does repeat itself over here. You notice there's four different sections, but that's okay. Now, the other thing you want to do is you kind of want to have an idea of how far apart the repeat is. And I guess mine is about six inches and you would do this measurement beforehand. And so I'm going to hit next. Then I can actually add it to my database. So I've got where it says my fabrics. I can say make new category and call it what I want. And I happen to have one that's already called patriotic. And I'm going to go call this one white background. And that's where it's going to get put. And I'm going to hit finish. Now I can use it at a later date. So I'm going to choose that one to get used today. And I can actually change the angle on the way this one looks. So I, can, I can't change a lot about it, but I can change the way that angle looks. And I can hit apply. And I can do OK. And there it is. It's my, it's, it actually has the red or the white background. But I'm going to applique fabric. And because I already have it loaded into fabric options, I'm going to pick on fabric options. And I actually have a couple of in here. And I think I have my red one. Yep, I have a red one there. I'm going to hit OK. So now I have my red fabric. And I'm going to change this back to zero just so it's not angled anymore. And I'm going to do OK. And I changed it to my red version of my patriotic fabric. So now I actually want to do um, the E. So I'm going to do capital E and apply. And of course, then it again is going to be the wrong size and I can actually drag it. And because I'm doing this when it's got the green markers, um, what's nice about that is it's adjusting any stitch counts and those kinds of things and i want to fatten him up a little bit so i'm not going to hold my control key i'm just going to drag him up like this so now i want to change that and i've got the red fabric here and i'm going to put blue here so i'm going to do a right mouse go to properties i'm sorry i'm going to do a right mouse and i'm going to go to applique fabric and again choose one of the fabrics that i personally have so i'm going to come down here to where it says my fabrics and i'm going to pick on the blue and I don't want it angled at all, and I can do OK. And it's going to put it in there. So now I want to add the scissors, and the scissors are going to come down here in the center. So that's actually a design that actually exists in the software. So we're going to hit the open, we're going to either hit file and then the open, insert, or I can actually hit the little file folder that's up in the left hand corner. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to go find where the, um, design is at, and it's under Premiere Plus 2. This PC documents Premiere Plus 2, and it's going to be in Samples, and then it's going to be in the Premiere Plus 2 in EMB, Stitch 2, and that happens to actually be down here in Leisure. And I'm going to go find the scissors, and I could have done a search too, because it's called Scissors. So I'm going to hit open that. And it's about the right size, but I need to angle it to the right way. So I'm going to turn it up. And I want to apply different colors to this. So I can actually come back to the Home tab. I'm going to pick on Color Tone. I'm going to Color Tone, and we're going to go and we're going to pick on those patriotic threads that we picked, we created, Patriotic 2. And so now I've got this and I'm going to change. I'm going to change anything with the gamma. I'm going to change my brightness to about a three somewhere in there. And so it brightened up the colors, but I need to change the contrast. So it starts looking for the reds and the other colors that I have in that database. And there it is. And I'm going to do OK. 
And so now I have this nice, I, I have it the colors I want. Now I can still change things. Maybe I do want this to be a different color and that to be a different color. But for the most part, it's, it is what it is. So I've got 2485, 2485, and a 2485. They're all pretty much the same. The only thing that's different is this. Now, I found that sometimes, and if you look, I've got that is going to be the same two things. See how the, when I slide my mouse over this color number three, the thread itself gets highlighted and then also a little screw. Well, I really want to make a little bit of a change there. So I really want the screw to be a totally different color. The other things I don't care about because they can stay the same because that's basically the scissors. But I need to get in here and I need to change the color of this screw. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually go to the modify mod, modify tab up here. And I want to make that screw a totally different color. Um, I want it wanted to be actually one of the dark grays. So I'm actually going to unselect everything but the black that's there. And then I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick on my um, magnifying glass and I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to insert a color change. So what I want to do is I want to insert this color change right about there. So I'm going to insert color command. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick on insert color command. And I'm going to actually change that to maybe the dark gray rather than the black or the navy blue. So we're going to do OK. So now I have a new color that's in there and I can now come back home and I now have a new color that's been added in my list of colors. And these will get colors sorted later. This one has to be done last because it actually goes over the top. So now we need that little sewing machine that's going to go right here. So to do that, we're going to go to the Wizards tab and we're going to pick on Express Design. And this time we're going to do Express Design in Directangle. And this one is, n is so that I can tell it well, how big do I want my design. Now I know that on the particular design we're going to use, it is a sewing machine and it's a little bit wider than what we want. So I'm actually going to start about here and I'm going to click, hold and drag my mouse and I'm going to drag it to about like that. And then I'm going to pick on create express border. And then I'm going to do next. I need to load a picture. So I'm going to click on load a picture and it happens to be under the samples Premiere Plus 2 EMB PIX2 motifs. So if you're looking for it over here and you need to find it so it's under Premiere Plus 2 EMB PIX2 motifs and the sewing machine is actually down here towards the bottom. That's the one we're going to pick on. And there it is. And we're going to do next and I'm not going to change anything. I do want it to be clipped just like that. We're going to do next. It's already found all the edges. When do next, it's automatically going to create an applique for me. But I really don't want a satin stitch applique. I actually just want it to be a double stitch and I can actually have it so it goes around the outside edge. I could choose triple. I could choose um, a different motif. I'm just going to leave it like it is. But I want to change the fabric. And this time I'm going to choose the white background fabric that I already have. So I can actually, and if you notice down here, these are the last ones that were used, but I need to go and go grab it because maybe it's not been used recently. And I can come here. I've already got it scanned in under my fabrics, patriotic, and it's the white and I'm going to do okay. And I'm going to do okay. And it's going to put my white fabric there and I could change the angle of it if I wanted to. And I'm not going to change anything else. I'm going to leave everything else just like it is and finish. Now, it is a little bit different size than I really, really want. And I want to make some changes. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that my four corners are blue and not white. Because if they're white, what happens when I change the size of the design, it will not change my number of stitches. And I need this to do that. So I'm going to hit my control key and the semicolon. And that, that will actually give me, so I have blue corners. I could also go to the home tab and click on um, resize. Okay. So it does the same thing. So I kind of want this to be a little bit fatter and a little taller, and then I can rotate it, move it around the way I want it. But Oh, gee, it doesn't really look much like a sewing machine yet. Let's add a little bit of things to it. So we're going to actually go to the super design tab and we're going to go and we're going to look for home. So home is actually got some neat little things in it. And we're going to pick on that little 
pen that's right there and we're just going to click on it and then we're going to hit apply. So I want to make sure that nothing is selected so I'm going to click on the outside edge and I'm going to just hit apply. And right now he's a little bit bigger than I really want him but so I'm going to come over to the home tab and because he's already green that's okay I can actually hit there or I can and come up to modify design and I want to make him a little bit smaller so let's just make him about 15 and I'm going to hit okay so he's a little bit smaller but I really don't need that blue tip that's on there and if you look real close and I'm going to zoom in here so he's got that blue tip and I really don't need that because I'm going to hide that and you'll see that here in a second. We're going to go to the Modify tab, and yes, you will get an error that says, when you do this, it's going to change some things about that. That's okay. We're going to hit OK. I'm going to uncheck the silver, and I'm going to leave the blue selected. Select All Visible, and I'm going to hit Delete. So I can either hit Delete here or on my keyboard, and I'm going to zoom back out. So I now have that, and this guy is going to actually come up here. So let's go back home. And I've got that guy selected and I make sure when you slide your mouse over the top that you have four arrows and I'm going to take and I'm going to slide that up here so he's kind of there and he's really kind of crooked isn't he I really need him to be turned just a little bit so I'm going to zoom in again and I'm going to just turn it just a little bit all right and I'm going to zoom back out but I need him to sew actually and I'm going to move him down just a little bit I need him to actually sew before I do this applique. So what I can do is I can actually come up and I'm going to pick on layout order and I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to actually to move to the back. So now what it's going to happen is it's actually going to sew out closer to the beginning of everything. I can also come over here and I can change that to that same color that I'm using over here. If you don't remember what it is, we can always go here and I can actually change where it says Sulky Metallic 30. I'm going to change that to My Threads. And then I'm going to choose on the Patriotic Patriotic 2. And I want to pick on one of the grays. And I'm thinking it was 2485, which is what the other one was. And that way, when it color sorts, that will get color sorted about the same time this is. And we won't have to worry about it. But I need a little handle here on our sewing machine. So we're going to back, go back to the letter tab. And I'm going to go pick on um, Marlowe. Now, remember, in the Premiere Plus 2, I can actually come to the Font Manager and do a couple of different things. And I know that Marlowe is the one I want to use. So I'm going to type in search and I'm going to do Marlowe. And I'm going to pick on the 15 to 40, which is OK. And because this is going to give me a nice little round knob, I'm going to use a period. And I want it fairly large, so I'm going to go to about a 100. And I know that's bigger than the recommended size, but that's OK. I'm going to hit Apply. And I know he came out green, and I'm going to move him over here. And I need to change. I don't want it to be green. I actually want it to be one of the other colors that's in my patriotic database. So I'm going to double click here. Again, I want to change this. And I, my threads, Patriotic 2, and I'm going to pick on that black there, and I want to put it there. So now I have it, and I'm ready. Because that font happens to have a lot of satin stitch to it, so it's really going to be long satin these stitches. So I'm going to show you how that, how I know that. We're going to, I'm going to go from here. I've got that little period selected, and I'm going to go to the Modify, mod, the modify tab. Yes, I'm going to get the error again. I'm going to do OK. And then I'm going to zoom in. And right now it's just these big long satin stitches. So if I select select stitches, you notice it's only looking at the outside edges. And I really kind of want it to have a little bit more to it than just these big long satiny things. And so I can keep it from getting caught on something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go zoom back out. And I'm going to go back. It doesn't matter where I go to. I go to the letter tab. And what I want to do is I need to hit undo because when I went from here into the modify tab remember it came gave me that error now all this is is stitches and i can't change the properties about this so there's my period i'm going to hit right mouse button and all i can do is properties i can change it to a different letter i can do those kinds of things but i want to change the information about that particular um period there so i'm going to hit undo so i'm going to get my little green boxes back and once it does that now I'm going to right mouse click and now I can go to satin column and I'm going to click on satin column and right now it's just big long stitches and I'm and it's pattern number zero and I'm going to do this drop down and I'm going to come down to the standard because those are pretty 
um, basic stitches, and I'm going to just pick on standard two. It doesn't really matter. And I don't need it to be quite as dense as a, a four. A four is pretty tightly together, and I'm going to make this more like a six. Just to kind of loosen it up a little bit, it is going over the top of the applique. So I've got pattern number two. I've changed the density. I'm not changing anything over here. That's all okay. We're going to do okay. And now when I go to the modify mod, modify tab, I'm going to hit this. I'm going to get that error again because it's going to change those green to white. That's okay. And I'm going to zoom in. And now what's going to happen, if I hit on select stitches, I'm going to have stitches all throughout. So it's kind of going to give me... It's going to sew, it's going to stitch, it's going to stitch, it's going to stitch, it's going to stitch, instead of being big, long stitches back and forth. So I'm going to go zoom to fit again, and I'm going to go back home, and I've already saved the color, and now I can ready to sew. So if you really want to see what it sews like, we're going to watch it sew. And it's going to do our letter L, we're going to do our letter E. It's going to do the scissors, and you notice that it popped up and it did this. That's because I have color sort on as my, my default. Not everybody likes to do that. And there I have it, and there we are, and we now have it. Don't forget, you want to do your um, export and save it someplace where you can actually save it. So I've got my designs, and I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this um, uh, Love Just Because We Can. Hit Enter open it up and I'm going to call this love save and then I'm going to export it make sure that says vp3 it's going to I've already got these set up as my defaults I'm going to do okay and I need again I need to go back and make find that folder and save it so now you have it and hope you learned something thanks